Does WWE have plans to have Sami Zayn challenge Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at WrestleMania later this year? Also, what's latest on The Rock status for WrestleMania? And who was set to win the possibly originally scheduled match between Roman Reigns and The Rock? We've got very latest details on that. Plus, NBC Universal CEO has commented on the company's potential acquisition discussions amid rumors about a possible purchase of WWE. We Bray Wyatt is reportedly the number one babyface on Friday Night SmackDown. Hulk Hogan needs help for toilet paper. Nikita Lyons reveals she's torn her MCL and meniscus. And WWE announces its next batch of next in line recruits. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. Let's start off talking about WrestleMania. Of course, the Royal Rumble is this coming Saturday. The road to WrestleMania begins, which means we can discuss and talk more about what the main event could be of the respective nights. Of course, there's two nights of WrestleMania once again this year. And seemingly, you would think Roman Reigns will at least be defending one championship. Will he be defending the Undisputed Universal Championship? Will he just be defending the Universal Championship? Will the WWE Championship be defended on a separate night by a separate person? We don't know. One thing that is being heavily speculated, though, is the winner of the Royal Rumble this coming weekend and how that will feature into WrestleMania and what that means for Roman Reigns. Now, one person that could win the Royal Rumble match is Sami Zayn. Now, of course, Sami Zayn got a stay of execution during his trial on Raw's 30th anniversary episode this week, and it appears there are big plans to come. With much of Zayn's story currently revolving around continually impro uh, improving himself, rather, whilst Kevin Owens tries to make him see sense, reports of plans for WrestleMania have been revealed. Dave Meltzer addressed the rumours on Wrestling Observer Radio, stating, quotes, The goal from the Roman Reigns standpoint all along has been to make Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn into stars, bigger stars, than they already are, and that actually worked. But obviously, the original plan was not for Sami Zayn to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and even as late as a couple of weeks ago, they were trying to find something to not be Sami Zayn. This was not the long-term plan of Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn, WrestleMania main event. That was not the Sami Zayn. The plan was not Sami Zayn. The thing is with Dave Meltzer is quotes. Difficult to read. <laughs> the plan was not Sami Zayn becomes a, becomes a superstar. The plan was just to do a few key things with Sami Zayn. Then we'll ditch him and get rid of him. And because it clicked, to their credit, they saw that it clicked and it was like, well, let's make him a star this year or this season. And that's what's happened. Now, with recent reports that The Rock is unlikely to be available or ready to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39, Meltzer has also reported that WWE is reluctant to have anybody defeat Roman Reigns, and that would have included the Great One himself. We'll get into that in just a second. Now, as I mentioned, to give a bit of an update on The Rock, um, we already know that Cody Rhodes, of course, he's going to be making his return from injury as part of the Men's Royal Rumble match this coming weekend, but WWE has been coy about other competitors. With some Royal Run Royal Rumble entrance being a surprise, fans are no doubt hoping for a big name, and they don't get much bigger, of course, than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. On the same at Very Wrestling Observer Radio show, Dave Meltzer addressed the possibility of The Rock at the Rumble, saying, quote, I think people have an idea of the Rumble winner, as far as it's either going to be Cody, it's going to be Sammy, or they're going to bring in an outsider. Everything that's happened in the last week or so, I don't think it's Dwayne. I was told it wasn't, and all indications are that it's not. Now, the problem is with Meltzer, when anything WWE is, at the moment, he's got a pretty bad track record when it comes to WWE, and just in general. A lot of the things he is saying, the opposite is tending to happen. So just because Meltzer says it's not going to be Dwayne, or I was told it's not going to be Dwayne, chances are, with how it's been going for Dave recently, it could be Dwayne. Now, when it came to a possible Roman Reigns versus um, The Rock match at WrestleMania, it was initially reported in August of last year that WWE planned to have The Rock return to the ring to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39, as long as the Hollywood star's schedule would allow him to train for an in-ring return. Now, there's been a lot of uncertainty surrounding the status of The Great One for WrestleMania 39, with several reports noting that the belief is The Rock won't be wrestling at the event. On the very same Wrestling Observer radio show, Dave Meltzer indicated that WWE is reluctant to have anybody defeat Roman Reigns, including The Rock. 
discussing upcoming plans for WWE World Title belts. Meltzer said, quote, I don't know that they're willing to have anybody beat Roman Reigns. Obviously, Dwayne Johnson wasn't beating Roman Reigns to win the title. Obviously, Cody Rhodes' name was in the mix, and the way that, that storyline was, he almost had to win. But that doesn't mean he would have won. I think people have an idea, as I mentioned, when it comes to the Royal Rumble. It's either going to be Cody, it's going to be Sammy, or they're going to bring in an outsider. So, to be honest, this is, again, this is one of these key things when it comes to Dave Meltzer, where it's a case of he is stating his opinion sprinkled in. And he's very good at this, but sprinkled in with what he's heard. But a lot of it is subjective. A lot of it is opinion based. Basically, to kind of clear through all of that, he don't know. Then <laughs> basically, he doesn't know. Sami Zayn, he he weaved that line very well because essentially he said it wasn't going to be Sami Zayn originally. Remember, Sami Zayn was only meant to be with the bloodline for a couple of weeks. It got over, so he stuck around a bit longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. As any great storyline in pro wrestling history, it got over, it was organic, people liked it, and they carried on with it. They listened to the crowd for a rare time, and this pre this predates the Triple H era. They were doing this with Vince McMahon. They listened to the crowd, and they said, let's go with this, and it got over. Now, a couple of weeks ago, it was not the plan to have Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns in the main event of WrestleMania, but things can change. It's getting more over. It's just as popular now as it was a couple of months ago, Sami Zayn. In fact, he's even more popular right now. So maybe they'll have no choice but to have Sami Zayn win the Royal Rumble and then face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Maybe that's what they're going to do. Cody Rhodes have put this on Twitter. The Almost the issue they have with Cody Rhodes at the moment is it's so obvious that he's probably going to win the Men's Rumble at the weekend that they might feel like, you know what, we've got to do something different just for the surprise shock factor because everyone's going to go into that pay-per-view knowing Cody Rhodes is probably going to win the Rumble. What you could have is Seth Rollins win the Rumble match, and then he somehow gets the WWE Championship from Roman Reigns. Don't ask me how. And then they have Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes WrestleMania WWE Championship. I think they could do that. I think that's a possibility. As far as The Rock, I know people are very much like, it's a smokescreen. All these reports of saying The Rock isn't coming to WrestleMania. All of these reports saying The Rock isn't going to be at the Royal Rumble. It's a smokescreen. As of right now, my feeling which again is not based on facts, it's not based on people I've spoken to or anything like that. It's the same as Dave Meltzer's feeling. It's speculation. My feeling is I don't think The Rock's going to show up. I think that we're more likely to see Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle at WrestleMania this year, and I'm all in on the Steve Austin versus Roman Reigns match. I know people don't want to see that, but I think that's just such a big money match. I think that's such a big WrestleMania main event. If they can pull that off, I think that'd be fantastic. I think it's more likely we see that than The Rock versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I just, I'm just not feeling it at this point. I just feel like The Rock is doing what The Rock always does when it comes to this time of the year. I'm busy, maybe next year. So there's different schools of thought they can go down. Again, my thought was, and I thought, and again, I, I think it was reported previously that it was going to be Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble, that it was going to be Sami Zayn versus uh, Roman Reigns at Elimination Chamber in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, of course, Sami Zayn's hometown, and then at WrestleMania for both KO and Sami Zayn, it was going to be them versus the Usos, and they would win the tag team titles. Meanwhile, the, the, the Universal Champion Roman Reigns would be facing either The Rock, or he'd be facing Steve Austin or Cody Rhodes. That, to me, makes the most sense. That's where I think they're going to go. Could Sami Zayn win the Royal Rumble at the weekend? Anything's possible. Anything is possible. Until the event happens, they can change their mind. That's the beauty of pro wrestling. Nothing is set in stone. You listen to the crowd and you go with it. You remember, Batista won the Royal Rumble in 2014, and the plan was for him to main event WrestleMania against Randy Orton. Who closed out that show holding up the World Championship? It was, it was Daniel Bryan. And that was because he got so over and CM Punk quit and a lot of other factors. But the point being, he got over. And if you get over, and if the crowd force it enough, even the stubborn Vince McMahon changes his mind. So Triple H, you would think, would do the same. So anything's certainly possible as we head into the Royal Rumble this weekend. Now, speaking of anything possible, the sale of WWE, that's certainly possible at the moment. And NBC Universal CEO Jeff Shell appeared to address the possibility of the company acquiring WWE during the recent Comcast earnings call. Since Vince McMahon's return to the board of directors, there have been a lot of speculation about a potential WWE sale, with the company reportedly likely to sell up before mid-2023. With NBC Universal Peacock streaming service currently being the home of the WWE network in the United States, it has been heavily speculated that WWE will become a Comcast property. 
During the January 26 call, Jeff Shell noted that the company is always interested in making worthwhile uh, acquisitions, not specifically addressing the WWE situation. He noted, quote, we are always looking for bolt on acquisitions that bolster our business. Two examples, we bought DreamWorks, which of course is the animation studios, and it has been paying off steadily since our acquisition. Just now, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which is a big hit at the box office, and really our entrance back into the Shrek universe continues to make that acquisition look really favorable and our Blumhouse investment over time where where we're partners with Jason Blum we have a big hit Megan this month which is coming out of that investment basically saying look we've invested in other things they're paying off we're always on the lookout now didn't mention WWE or anything like that but this is how sort of takeovers kind of work sometimes they are kind of speculated about in the media space and they throw things out there and see what the reaction would be from their shareholders their stakeholders and I think that could be an instance of that they're clearly they're still I think the odds on favorite to purchase WWE given their existing relationships with Raw and NXT being on USA Network with the WWE Network being on Peacock it seems like a natural fit and again we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, for the remainder of the year. Now, interestingly, in an interview with Nick Talbot of the San Antonio Express, Kevin Owens actually addressed these recent sales stories, saying, quote, the internet will say what the internet will say, and then the reality will be what really matters. We just care about what we do in the ring. That's what we try to do our best at. Now, Gunther also basically said the same thing too recently. He said, quote, I mean, rumors are rumors. And at the end of the day, I'm not the CEO. I'm a wrestler. So I focus on what I do in the ring and leave the business to those who do business, which again... I mean, it's one, they go around with a media person anyway, so of course they're going to say that. But two, what can they do? What can Gunther do <laughs> about the sale of WWE? This is the thing, I guess, with nowadays is that people always assume that they have to be involved, they have to comment on everything. Um, if you're a wrestler, it's a bit above your pay grade, isn't it? You know, so what, are they, what, what can they say? They just have to do their job and hope that Vincent Mann doesn't come back, <laughs> uh, even though he already is back. So there you go. Uh, let's talk about Bray Wyatt. Of course, he's in that pitch black match against LA Knight at the Royal Rumble on Saturday. Bray Wyatt's WWE TV in-ring return. And a new report has shed more light on how WWE views SmackDown star Bray Wyatt following his return to the company. Wyatt made his WWE comeback at the end of October 2022 at the Extreme Rules Premium Live event following weeks of white rabbit teases on television and on social media. While the popular star has wrestled several live event matches, Wyatt has yet to make his televised in-ring return, doing so at the Royal Rumble this weekend. Per Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, Wyatt is positioned as the top babyface on SmackDown in his opinion. Now, discussing the possibility of a Wyatt versus Roman Reigns match, Meltzer said, quote, I mean, it's possible Bray is considered the number one babyface on SmackDown. He is the biggest slotted star that Roman Reigns has not worked with. But also, Roman knows that the people who work with Bray always look a lot worse than going in. Uh, and it's interesting because when Roman Reigns came back to WWE television in 2020 during the pandemic and Bray Wyatt, the fiend, was on SmackDown at the time, Go back and watch those shows around September, October time, just before The Fiend got drafted to Monday Night Raw. Clearly, clearly, they were planting the seeds for a Roman Reigns versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt feud. Clearly, Reigns had just won the championship in that triple threat match, the no-holds-barred triple threat match involving Reigns, The Fiend, and Braun Strowman. Reigns won it, and it felt like, because Reigns pinned Braun Strowman, it felt like it was going to be Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns. And then suddenly, despite them teasing this, they even had that great shot on SmackDown where Alexa Bliss is staring at Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. He felt like, okay, that's the direction they're going to go in. And then Bray Wyatt went to Raw, and they never did it. People speculated at the time that Reigns didn't want to work with the Fiend character. He didn't think it was right to be facing him at that period of time. And do you know what? He's probably right if that is the case. But as far as Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt, they don't have to do that right away. They can do that in September. They can do that later on this year. Now's not the time. Bray Wyatt hasn't even wrestled a match on television just yet. Now, uh, in addition to obviously, again, he's making his in-ring return at the weekend against LA Knight in that pitch black match. Uh, obviously, they had that moment this past week on Raw is 30 involving LA Knight, the American badass version of The Undertaker and Bray Wyatt. And LA Knight spoke about that segment on Insight with Chris Van Vliet. He noted that it was a last minute decision for actually to, for him to appear on Raw. He said, quote, I didn't even know I would be going to Raw last minute. All right, you guys are coming to Raw. Why? Royal Rumble is coming around. We got the pitch black match, the Royal Rumble, all this stuff. It's go, go, go. He was about this close to getting slapped in the mouth. I decided to spare him. You always hear the cliche when you're standing in that ring and the bell tolls. It's chills. Yeah, sure. 
But when that some bitch hit, it was chills. It was pretty wild. At the same time, to be standing there and doing my thing and to be very recognized, that audience was right on top of everything I had to say, even with the Undertaker in the ring. That's a big feather in my cap as far as I can, I'm concerned. At the same time, looking at a guy who's undoubtedly a legend, Hall of Famer, crazy nights leading into the Royal Rumble. Um, There's a massive moment for LA Knight. And what a difference between that and the maximum male models, right? Max who? Yes. This uh, I'm glad to see that was over. This is a heck of a story. <laughs> This is a heck of a story. Hulk Hogan needs help. Now, you might see the tweet on the screen right there and say, whoa, uh, Owen, this is, is this serious? The question is, what you gonna do when you run out of toilet paper, brother? Well, tweet about it and ask for help, apparently. Now, in the latest episode of Hulk Hogan versus social media, Hulk had uh, was pretty concerned on social media. At first, he just tweeted help. You can see it on the screen right there with no other context, which may have led to a genuinely a bit of concern from fans. Fans might have been thinking, oh, goodness, what's happened to Hulk Hogan? Now, a few minutes later, he then followed up with one of the greatest tweets of all time. I will show it on the screen right now. It's this. You can read it. Take your own time to read it. It says, quote, I ran out of toilet paper, brother. Help. Now, personally, I don't think he... <laughs> was the exclamation points <laughs> that, that that needed. Now, I think it turned out okay for him because he soon deleted the tweets. So one can assume he got the toilet paper he needed at the time. Perhaps it was Jimmy Hart. He's everywhere and, he, and he's almost up Hulk Hogan's ass. So maybe, maybe that's what it was. But <laughs> bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Um, an injury update on Nikita Lyons. Uh, on this week's edition of NXT, WWE shot a brief angle in the dreaded NXT parking lot. A lot of people getting attacked there still. The angle saw Nikita Lyons be attacked by a mystery attacker, which was likely her current rival Zoe Stark, who could be seen leaving the scene behind Nikita. Now, the reason for the angle wasn't known, but now we know why she was written off of television so suddenly. Taken to Instagram, Nikita announced she suffered a torn ACL and meniscus, which will keep her out of action for an extended period of time. She wrote, quote, ACL and meniscus are torn. This comeback is personal. Thank you to all who consistently show love and genuine support every week. You have no idea how much it means to me. Those of you who don't see the vision, thank you to stay your ass right there. This is just another lesson, uh, life lesson needed to teach. I love, light, positivity as always. And obviously wish her the best in her recovery from her injury. Finally, WWE's announced uh, 15 new Next In Line recruits. WWE has unveiled the third class of the Next In Line NIL Collegiate Athletes program, revealing 15 new signings. The program, officially announced in late 2021, allows WWE to recruit and develop future performers through collaborative partnerships with college athletes. Now, the 15 athletes who have signed NIL deals with WWE include Abby Jacobs, Alexandra Jacksek, uh, Leah Armstrong, Cameron Jones, Dee Beckwith, Greg Kuhn, uh, Kirk Vliet, uh, Isaiah Iton, Jaden Fields, Landon Jackson, Mady Olback, Nick Dawkins, Ontil, uh, Badania, Peyton Prusin, Tori Ortiz, and Turner Washington. Now, obviously, those names at the moment mean nothing, but they might in the future. So we'll have to wait and see. But there you go, guys. That's the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts on today's WWE news stories in the comment section below. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.